John McLean at uh, IBM, you're responsible for worldwide client engagement for blockchain. What is exactly your job? So, um, my job's really to talk to clients about their use cases, scenarios, help them on that journey, help them on the blockchain adoption that we're now starting to see in the market space. And clients being big companies. Uh, big companies, um, not restricted to the financial services market. It's also other industries as they start looking, you know, into how blockchain can really change their industry. Uh, probably you're hot with your clients, right? Because blockchain is it's very starting busy now. At the it's moment. coming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what kind of um, wh what exactly are the companies? What companies are looking for uh, ways to implement blockchain technology, or w in what sector you find them? What are what are they looking for? So we kind of look at the first projects. Uh, you know, if you look at the scenarios and use cases the clients are looking at, it, it kind of breaks into four fairly standard patterns that we see. Um, the first use case is around this idea of an internal ledger. Mm. So it could be internal to the company, cross division, cross geography boundary. So they can actually get a very consistent view for audit position and regulatory compliance mm. about what the financial market is. Um, next use case we're seeing is this idea of shared reference data. So if you look at the world, you know, be it the finance industry, or the insurance market, or the pharmaceutical, there's tons of shared reference data that, you know, the question is who's got edit update permissions, who's got published permissioning rights within a company. And this is a way of actually, instead of having a centralized body do that, you know, aggregation of information and then publish out to the business network, mm -hmm. it's shared ownership and shared edit capability of your pieces of data information. Last one is the idea of asset management, be it you know, something which has got a nominal value, so it's often things like uh, loyalty programs or corporate action, voting on proxy, things like that. And then the last use case is the one that everybody gets very excited about, which is the financial use cases, be it trade finance or faster settlement or something about letters of credit, et cetera. Are you not excited about that? Uh, we are excited yes. about it, but you know, you just got to also understand um, I think those projects are going to take slightly longer to be adopted and deployed due to regulatory concerns and regulatory governance and oversight. So mm. as we run those experiments, as we run those first projects, the regulators are already showing a lot of interest. So what we're seeing is people playing with high asset value markets that potentially aren't as heavily regulated as some of the ones we instantly jump to. So if you look at uh, the Japanese stock exchange, JPX, you know, um, they're looking at uh, mm. an area of low liquidity market for, uh, and that isn't an area that's that's regulated today. So they're looking at how they can do primary and secondary market in this new world. Are you working for the Japanese stock exchange? So we're doing exchange. some work with yeah. the Japanese JPX. Uh, and and, and uh, the other financial institutions you work for, who is, who is really interested? Who is really going to implement the blockchain technology for their customers? Because that's that, the, the problem is it's in labs. Right? In, in labs. Blockchain is in labs. When is it coming out into the world? When is it going to function? So what, are you, what are you seeing? So I think you're going to see, um, I think you're going to see some projects rolling out, uh, you know, in a limited format this year, right? I think you're going to see, uh, you know, true deployment in, you know, 2017, from my perspective, uh -huh, from what uh -huh. I've seen. Um, and the, cli but the clients are running experiments on live data and are, are running first projects now, right? So they are looking to how they can adopt and how they can implement that. You know, one of the things we're looking at as, as IBM is, you know, in IBM Global Finance, we run a, a basically a financing arm. So we work with partners and suppliers and we provide that capital liquidity to, to ease that market. And that's quite a, a, a long supply chain, right? And mm. what we're trying to do is we're going to use um, blockchain as a sort of shadow ledger over the top to give better oversight visibility into that business network for looking at things like dispute resolution. So when you look at our business network, you know, people always want to dispute what's happened, what, where, and when, yeah. and a way of managing and getting better you know, guidance in that space, and also, frankly, taking cost out is, is using blockchain to give that oversight and governance and visibility across that business network, because mm -hmm. we're sharing that information with our partners and suppliers. In the financial world, which you were, you were telling about, um, when when do you think we will be on the blockchain when we go to our bank? When? When do I think yes. it will be? Um, 
So I, I guess I would counter that by saying if I knew when uh, anything was going to happen, I, I'd probably be working Wall Street, not working in technology. Okay. So, because that's, you know, you're asking me to, to guess. And to be honest, yes. it's moving a lot faster than I thought it would. Okay. If I look at this technology adoption, I thought people would be running, you know, probably projects next year, as in beta projects, things like that. We're already well into the experimentation stage. Some early people are actually, you know, running live projects. And, you know, your, your question is, when is it going to be pervasive and fully dominant in the market space? You know, I, I would hate to, I, I'd be guessing if I was guessing, and I, I'm not very good at guessing as an engineer. Okay, but probably the banks, the banks are in a hurry, right? Are I, they not? I think the banks are, are, are very interested in it. I think they're yeah. more worried about uh, being disintermediated more than anything. Yeah, right? and, but at this point in time, they yeah. have the clients. At this point, they do have the clients, right? Just put them on the blockchain and start a complete new business. Well, yeah, but they, they still have to get through that engineering phase, right? We're at the very uh -huh. beginning of this technology adoption, right? Um, and it's making good progress, but you know, it is still very early, right? And people are going to take some time to be convinced, right? With all technology, there are, th th there's definite waves in technology and you can see the, the adoption curves that classically happen, right? And if you look at the internet, we went through that. When you look at what we've done with web services and web sphere and things like that, you know, they follow a fairly classical model, right? Now, blockchain's moving very quickly, but it's very hard to predict, you know, it's going to be X by this date, right? Uh, be it market penetration or anything. What I would counter and say is, if you look at it, because you know, one of people say, is it real? Is it a thing, right? And what I'd say is with a level of interest. People ask you, is it, is it real, is yeah, it a thing? Yeah, of yeah. course they do, right? Um, it's like any new technology. People uh -huh. say, well, is that real? It's like, you know, boy bands or anything. Are they going to be the next <laughs> big thing? Um, and what I'd say is the level of interest and its application to so many industries means this is, this is a thing it is going to be adopted and deployed. The only thing that I don't know the answer to is, you know, when you say, when is it going to be a dominant market force? I can see it being deployed, you know, as you said, I, 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 we will see people, you know, in production, I would imagine by the end of this year and certainly in 2017. But when's it going to be pervasive uh, and, okay. uh, and run all the business networks and banking? I don't know, because, you know, go look how long it took the internet to to get to where it's gone. But the question, the question uh, is actually, there will be a dominant role, that's your conviction. I, I believe if you look at its yeah. capability, mm. um, with all the things we're seeing, it, we're, it is a transformative you know, piece of technology that's, and the thing is it's so many industries, if it was just financial services market, I, I'm not sure I'd, you know, it, it was just focused on that, yes, it'd be important. But it's a fact, you know, you can start looking at it for managing digital health records. You can start seeing it looked in taxation and government, between government departments. You can start seeing it in the pharmaceutical industry, the supply chain, the automotive, the aerospace. You know, we, we haven't hit an industry yet that says, no, this has got no interest to me. And when I see it being that pervasive, then it's real. And then really we're just talking about how long it takes us to get it on a firm footing, right? And people convinced that it's the right thing. Because... As humans, we're quite resistant to change, right? Inertia is, we like doing things the way we've traditionally done things. So when you come along and say, we're gonna give you a piece of new technology and it's gonna be open, uh, it's gonna increase trust and visibility, there's good things about that, but some people get qu quite concerned about those things. But, 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 but understandable, because it's about the important things of our life, of our society, right? Uh, Not necessarily. And money, health are not necessarily. No, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be. You know, as you look at people starting to deploy this, I think some of the first projects are going to be around fairly prosaic things that we just want to manage and control better, uh, right? Uh. So, you know, that's usually how it goes. You usually don't take your most important and valuable asset and uh, and information and putting on a piece of brand yeah. new technology. People usually, as engineers, we usually go through a progressive deployment view, uh -uh. and that's really what I'm trying to say. I think we're going to be deploying this year and next year, and then over time you'll see it emerge into even more and more industries. And uh, you mentioned earlier the regulators, role mm -hmm. of the regulators. Uh, is 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 that halting the process? The process is that a real problem? 
Um, it depends where you are. I mean, some of the regulators are being very forward thinking. You know, I, I know in Holland and I know in the UK, they stood up sandbox environments so that fintechs have license to play and, and expose and, and share what they're doing with the, the, with the regulator. Um, I think that's a very progressive way of looking at it. But of course, with, with all things, the regulator is worried about systemic risk, right? Yes. And depending on the asset type and, and, and the area, then they're even more the, worried or concerned. So the regulator will want to watch. The regulator yeah. is, is waiting to be convinced, right? And as we look to deploy this technology, you know, we're going to have to convince that regulator and bring the regulator on the journey with us, right? That, that's just the nature. Same way as we've got to bring the clients and the clients, you know, want to start looking at deploying this technology. They, we've also got to bring the regulator with us. But sir, would you, would you think that extra laws are necessary to implement the blockchain technology? Or is it just, it's, it's doing the same thing differently? Uh, I know, but it's... Um, Remember what I said, they, I, I think for me, the, the regulator's concern is systemic risk, you know, because you can do things faster, quicker, yeah. more transparently, you can share the information more broadly if you so decide. And the question is, you know, it's back to what I said, you know, is this, you drive up trust, you increase transparency, you can share information more broadly. Yeah. Um, and some people will like that and other people will say, you know, no, I won't. But right. the, the blockchain is immutable, right? It's safe, right? So, so how, how do you counter uh, regulators telling you this is a risk, Mr. McLean? So um, one of the reasons we, we've taken the approach we've had with the, the open community uh, and the, the Hyperledger project uh, with the Linux Foundation has been, you know, if, if you look at security technology, um, the best way to, to increase the robustness and, and, and security of, of systems is, is to develop in the open with a broad set of participants, a broad set of eyes looking at that code and that capability and, and frankly, A, trying to strengthen it and B, trying to break it. Um, so if you do things in private, you, you, you set yourself up for somebody attacking that. So one of the reasons why we're, we're developing the, the, the crypto technology we are, along with the Linux Foundation and the other members of the, of the Hyperledger project, is to ensure you know, we've got the, the, the most increased confidence we can in the crypto technology we're using. Um, but, you know, that is something we've just got to continue and work mm. uh, But is it is it true? Is it immutable and 100% safe? So, uh, I would say, you know, the immutability, the logic around consensus and the ability to have a, an unchanged ledger, I, I think is very strong, right? I, I, I'm pretty comfortable with that. You know, um, having been in the security systems for, for, for a long time and worked with security systems, um, I, I think it's, it's, it's a very robust system. Would I say any system is 100%? Um, I, I would, I'd be foolish to say any system was 100%, right? Uh, and that's just down to the nature of not just internal threats, mm. but, you know, external threats as well. You know, if you look at most fraudulent activities, it's still permutated by somebody internal to organizations. So there's there's always challenges around rights, permission, and everything else. What I would counter by saying is, if you look at the ledger, to update and change the ledger, you know, if there's 10 participants, you have to convince six participants in that business network to update and change that information. So, uh, you know, that mm. single attack I I vector is, is, is certainly radically decreased, right? So intrinsically, I think it is designed for security in mind, right? Uh, I think it's very robust. But, you know, we've got to run some pretty large-scale projects and do a lot of work with our, uh, our, our members of the Linux Foundation to make sure we're all comfortable with that. Is IBM making money off the blockchain already? Um, so we are making some money from our client set um, and we're doing engagements with a number of clients. Um, but this is an area that we, we believe will develop in the future. You know, we're doing a number of services engagements. We're doing a number of first projects with clients for fee. Uh, and yes, we are making money from this space. But, you know, it, it's what's the potential for the future that really excites us. Because it really does hit so many different industries. John McLean, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.